Hey, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna continue the conversation of more advanced trigonometric modeling of real world situations. In this video, we're gonna talk about damped harmonic motion. Generally speaking, there are a lot of different applications of damped harmonic motion. One of the most introductory and most common introductory examples of that is the motion of springs. To get right into it, our general formula for damped harmonic motion is this right here. It should feel very similar to what we've done before. The difference here, and this is different than the changing midline that we've previously discussed, is the fact that we have this exponential in the place of our amplitude constant. Importantly here, when we're looking at this formula, we have a constant midline, this plus k, we can think of that as our plus d also. We have some kind of period change right here. But we also, importantly, have this changing amplitude. So this, this exponential expression put in front of the sign right here is where we get some changing of our amplitude. Generally speaking, in most applications of this dampened harmonic motion, this will be a decay exponential for the amplitude. And what's going to happen then with this kind of function is the a value will be the starting amplitude. So again, that a constant right there, the a factor, will be the start of the exponential value. But then this exponential factor right here, again, the b in this case will almost always be less than one. So it's a decay exponential, or in other words, it will be dampening. So over time, the amplitude will become less and less. And again, before we get into an application of damped harmonic motion, let's look at this example right here that gives us a visual understanding of what this kind of function looks like. Importantly here, if we're looking at the blue in this model right here, this is what creates the oscillation and the midline. As you look at this graphical representation right here, we have this midline here at five that stays constant. And again, that's because with this addition right here, previously with the changing midline, we added some kind of variable function it's staying constant at five. But what's going on here, as you can see, is that when t is zero, we have this amplitude of 20. We go up to 25, that's because we have an amplitude of 20 and a midline of five, so up to 25. So that's our starting amplitude. But as time goes on, this factor right here reduces the amplitude. In this case, if we thought of t as seconds, the way to interpret this would be is that every second we lose 10% of our amplitude or we retain 90% of our original amplitude. And as you'll see in the next example, the reason these kind of functions do well in modeling springs, because if you ever pull the spring and let it loose, you know that it oscillates back and forth, but as time goes on, it reaches some equilibrium point and stops moving back and forth. And if you look at this sine curve, it's still oscillating, but over time, the oscillations become smaller and smaller as they become tighter around the midline of y equals five. So here we have our class example. We're going to model the motion of a spring with dampened harmonic motion. In this case right here, we're being told a spring is attached to a ceiling and is pulled seven centimeters down from equilibrium. Importantly here, just to give context, you think of a spring that's hanging, think of a, a kind of a loose spring is I think the easiest way to conceptualize this. This happens with tight springs too, but it's easy just to visualize with looser springs. So you have a spring that's kind of hanging by its own weight. Where it hangs naturally is called the equilibrium, but then we pull it down seven centimeters past that equilibrium. We're being told the amplitude decreases by 11% each second. So as this spring is oscillating, it doesn't oscillate as much. Really the longest it is when we pull it down at seven, when it goes up and comes back down, it doesn't go all the way down to seven. And we're given by this dampening right here, this 11% each second. We're told also the spring oscillates five times a second. And then we're being asked to find a model for this situation. And obviously, since we're talking about it in this video, we're gonna use dampened harmonic motion. There's a couple of different ways that we can attack this, but let's first attack the, the trig part of the function right here. So what we need to do is have this oscillation. Um, importantly, we need to talk about where the midline would be and then the period of this. This statement right here is gonna have us deal with the period. So what this means is every second, this spring makes five up and down complete motions. So importantly, when we're interpreting this right here, if it oscillates five times per second, the period or one oscillation would be one fifth of a second. 
to repeat that, the way that I'm interpreting this is the fact that it says this goes through five periods per second. That means then that it takes a fifth of a second for this to complete one period. And again, we know that if we know the period, we can find the B value, which helps us obtain this period is B equals two pi divided by our period here of one fifth. When we take two pi and divide it by one fifth, we flip and multiply to get 10 pi. Next up, let's talk about the midline. So again, the midline is this idea that given what we're measuring, we have this equilibrium, but actually in this case, this is pretty straightforward and will often happen with these spring questions is because our whole model in this case is the distance that the, the spring is from the midline. So zero would be the midline in this case. So the equilibrium we have in our equation is the distance that we're measuring from or this origin point right here. So we have a midline at zero. And as always with these kind of advanced trig models with the changing midline or the damped harmonic motion, we need to attack the trigonometric part and the dampening or the changing midline functions separately. Um, but I want to kind of just write this out. It always helps me to keep, keep myself organized. Um, I haven't identified my dampening factor here yet. Um, but what I have, what I can do is deal with the trig part. So let me think, am I going to use sine or cosine? Well, at zero right here, we're at our maximum of seven centimeters, the distance. That's our maximum value. So we're not starting at the equilibrium. We're starting at the maximum. So that means that I am going to use cosine. So I have a cosine which starts at its maximum value. There's no shifts needed here. My B value to give me the period of one fifth of a second is 10 pi. And our independent variable here is T. And then our midline is plus zero. And just to emphasize this point again, we're not gonna change anything because this function is always in reference to the equilibrium of a spring. There's not like some offset for that. That is just the equilibrium is at zero. It starts at zero. That's the average throughout this process. Now let's get into the work of talk about this dampening right here. Well, there's two factors here. It's the starting amount and how much we're reducing. First and foremost, we know that we're starting at seven. So this is just like if we didn't have any crazy function here, we'd put a seven in front of this so it reaches this maximum at seven instead of one. So that still works in this case right here. What we now need to work on is this exponential factor that creates the dampening. So right here, we're told that each second it decreases by 11%. If we want a decrease by 11%, then we, what we want as a exponential factor is 0.89. So just to work through this real fast, if we want to decrease by 11%, this means that we want an exponential factor of 0.89 or 89%. So importantly here, the way that we always do this, I think about this in percentages, you can think about this in decimals, but if we want to decrease by 11%, the way that we say is we have 100% and we subtract away 11% from that, we're left with 89%. So what we want after every second, if we lose 11%, we want 89% of what we had this, the, the second before. Relating that to our exponential factor is 0.89, and we have to raise this to the T so that it applies this factor of 0.89 every second. And as a quick debrief, we'll just go back through all the components of this function right here. First of all, we have this changing amplitude, this exponential that starts at seven, and then every second we're losing 11%, or in other words, retaining 89% of that amplitude. In this right here, we're starting using cosine, because that means we're starting at our maximum distance. Again, I could throw a negative in here if we were starting at a minimum distance. That's the only change I would do. I would use a sign if we were starting at the equilibrium. But again, as we said here, we're starting with this pulled spring being pulled down right here. This 10 pi is what creates this oscillation of 10 times per second. We took two pi and divided it by one fifth because if it oscillates five times per second, it oscillates one, 
every one fifth of a second it's oscillating. We're not adding any midline here. We added zero, but that doesn't do anything because we're measuring this distance all based on the equilibrium of zero of this spring. And following a wrap it up, let's look at a graphical representation of this situation right here. And if we look at this, this is what we would expect. It's like the previous image we had with the damped and harmonic motion. We start at 0, 07. That's a consequence of having the 7 here and choosing cosine. If we had the minimum, if we started at a minimum value, importantly, what we have done is just put a negative right here. If we started at equilibrium, we would have used a cos or sorry, a sine. We also have the fact that in between the seconds, and I've labeled these seconds at zero, one, and two, what you're going to see, importantly, is it's oscillating five times a second. That's the reaction of this 10 pi right here. So we get five os oscillations per second. And importantly, this exponential factor right here, we're lo losing 11 seconds we're losing 11%, excuse me, per second. And so at one second or at zero seconds, we're up at seven, but every second from one and then two, where we have that amplitude is now a little bit less. It's 11% of it, what it was previously.